One of my childhood favorite anime has been Digimon for a very long time. And to me, the peak Digimon has always been Digimon Tamers, which is canonically the third season. It is a bit of a departure from the first two seasons. The first two seasons had a uh, chronological story, and then the third season just took it in its own direction. And, well, I just have so much love for that story because it handled so many serious topics and it actually handled redemption arcs it has one of the best redemption arcs in my opinion in anime and on top of that recently i've actually been inspired to start working on a an a bridge series i will be doing more announcements about it coming up we're definitely going to be having auditions for it so keep your eyes out for that but for now, we're going to be checking out a video by a Red Sage 25, like XXV. Pretty small channel, but let's see what they got to say. I don't judge people by their size. Yes, that is an intentional intentional innuendo. So very out of nowhere, I ended up rewatching the entirety of Digimon season three, Good Tamers, taste. which personally I haven't revisited this show since the Jetix days. So this was a pure nostalgia trip for me. But along the way, I found the show to be better than I ever remembered. For those who don't know, Digimon Tamers is the darker sequel to the original Digimon series. Digimon Adventure. Yeah, like in the original series, there were like a couple of dark episodes or darker themed episodes. Specifically coming to mind right now is an episode from season two where one of the main characters named Kari goes to like this dark world and a goddamn Cthulhu-esque monster appears in the background, but then that storyline just never comes back. It gets wrapped up in the very end in like a really rushed way. With Tamers, they spread it out throughout the 50 episodes that they had. Adventure. We follow Takato, Henry, and Rika, accompanied by their partner Digimon, as they fend off evil Digimon who seek to take over both the digital and the real world. Like most people, I like to have background noise. You don't remember Digimon being dark? Most of the time it actually wasn't, but when you actually followed along Digimon Tamers throughout the entire thing, it had much darker plot themes along it, and I'm going to leave any spoilers for the video to talk about before I actually get into story beats. At the end of the video, if it doesn't really talk about the particular stuff i'm betting it will we'll get to the rest of my thoughts later we're not even a minute in always on when i'm doing other things usually i'd put on a show i've already watched and kind of half tune into it but something about having tamers on in the background was really grabbing my attention i ended up stopping what i was doing entirely to actually just sit and binge the show again nice. mostly in english but i also dipped my toes into the japanese version a little bit because I really love the opening and ending theme songs a lot. And from what I've heard, um, season one and two, whereas, again, from what I've heard, it sounded like the English translations were a lot closer and like a lot of the stuff was a lot closer to the original source material. So honestly, it's worth watching in English. That's the only experience I've had with it and I absolutely love it. I do not doubt that there is a wonderful Japanese dub out there, but it's just not the one I grew up with. I must say, I was genuinely surprised at how well it aged. Digimon Tamers is the season that really solidified Digimon, at the time at least, as Pokemon's sometimes darker and more mature cousin. This version of the series handled a variety of more thought-provoking topics that, as a returning, much older, and mature viewer now really got me thinking. It's constantly questioning the morality of taming and befriending these creatures and fighting alongside them, what it means for the Digimon to evolve and potentially pose a danger to the real world, bringing into light the positive and negative impacts of Digimon and human relations for both parties, and challenging the cast to grow as individuals, but most importantly, as a team. Hell, the series even touches on things such as depression, which to be yeah. honest, I think this introduced me to the idea of such a thing in the first place. Honestly, Tamers handled depression, at least from what I remember. It's been a year or two since I've gone through it again. But they handled depression in a very real way. And it, it actually treats its viewers as 
you know, people that can understand the emotion. The original writer of the series, Chiaki, I forget his last name, or the, the other name, Chiaki something. They are a wonderful writer, very, very, they actually get into Cthulhu-esque places, and we'll see where this video takes us. Throughout the series, the Tamers bond and the dynamics of the relationship with these digital monsters is brought into question a lot and tested often against their ability to grow and mature their perspective as well as grow as people the most though I feel. This idea reaches across the entire cast involved with the Digimon directly. See, in Digimon Tamers, Digimon truly are a product of man, a program created by them and even a card game created by people that the kids play at first. To the creators of them, they're nothing more than that and it's to the point where yeah, essentially, the Digimon Season 1 and 2, where the TV showed, I, I guess, or something in that vein, that aired in the world of Digimon Tamers, where it was man-made uh, hobby that actually ended up evolving into living creatures. Howdy. Where individuals treat them as just code, or even less. By all means, they are just a product and very much a child's game. So when it turns out the digital world is real and so are Digimon, it brings into question how these beings should be treated and the threat of what Digimon can potentially be is thoroughly assessed. Although we see some Digimon be friendly and befriend humans from both past series and this one, we all know that these beings can be just as dangerous as any human, possibly even nuclear level threats if left unchecked. Oh, we yeah. see some people view them just as tools of battle at first, and in other positions of power, don't even seem to acknowledge the fact that although they were nothing but code before, things are different now, and they're fully flesh and bone to some extent with emotions and needs of their own, more than just ones and zeros. They become capable of coherent thoughts and much, much more. Time and time again with the main cast. Yeah, especially with Digimon Tamers, they develop the partners as their individual characters that grow alongside the, the main cast uh, as like complements to their personality. Uh, Takato being this free spirit Digimon enthusiast and Geomon being this literally born yesterday kind of character where he was born in the first episode of the show so we're watching through the series alongside with or we're getting to know all of this stuff sort of on the level with Geomon though more so on the level with Takato for fans that have knowledge of Digimon previously which is honestly why I really think Digimon Tamers is really great for being an introduction into the Digimon franchise at large. Though I can't really recommend later season or later series or parts of the franchise. I haven't really caught up with them that much. I did watch some of the Adventure Try. That stuff was pretty, pretty good. I don't think I finished it though. Cass, Takato, Henry, and Rika the most I noticed especially early on, struggle with the idea of whether these Digimon should be controlled, similar to what we expect from other monster taming series, where that is in fact the norm. Initially, this is out of fear of what they could possibly become for some of the tamers, and the nature of their relations. Takato being afraid of Gilmon's want to be strong, and the fear that with that strength, he'd lose his friend. Rika being afraid Renamon just want the user for more power in the long run and Henry being afraid of the consequences of letting their Digimon Digivolve and who could possibly be hurt in the process of these huge city-spanning fights they have sometimes. You see, in Tamers, there's this yep. huge emphasis on all the Digimon's thirst to evolve and become much stronger. It's a natural instinct for them. They want to grow in every way, but in some cases that hunger for growth leads to them becoming more dangerous mons with the possibility of even wrecking havoc on both the digital and material fronts. And rightfully so, the Tamers fear this at first, but we get to see them be some of the first to truly grow alongside them and trust in their partners. Fight after fight, each individual Tamer learns to trust their partner Digimon and 
Often, their goals end up aligning. This even inevitably spreads to those who before wished to eradicate the Digimon, and thought of them all as just brain-dead monsters that were capable of nothing but destruction. Upon further assessment, they're a Yeah, for those that aren't aware, this guy with the blonde hair, his name is Yamaki. He is the head of a program called Hypnos, I believe it was where they're trying to keep Digimon from breaching into the real world because they recognize that Digimon are this potentially massive threat, but then they don't, at the beginning, realize, or they don't know about the connections between the Tamers and their Digimon, and how you can have Digimon be beneficial. It's not just all damages. You can figure out how to live in symbiosis with them. And throughout the series... Yamaki does come to understand that at least a little bit. The relationship and the cooperation between the two becomes crucial for both beings survival. It becomes a matter of if they can't grow together and learn to trust each other, other people's lives will be lost in the process possibly. The growth that comes through this relationship in many aspects is extremely beneficial for both parties, whether that be for emotional growth or maturing as individuals and obtaining better ideologies or even perspectives. I think the best example of the relationship evolving between the two is Takano and Gilmon though. See, at some point, the hunger for the means to grow faster and get stronger consumes the both of them, causing Gilmon to digivolve into exactly what they feared before, a truly uncontrollable monster. Through the intense bond between the two though, Takano- Unironically, the way this, this um, scene played out with uh Guillaume's dark digivolution to mega it was actually fairly scary in the context this friendly lovable little guy turns into literally a kaiju an uncontrollable kaiju I was able to bring Gilmon back to his senses. These events inevitably push them all to discover what it truly means to bond with their partner and grow and mature stronger together as one in unity. See, the bond between partner and Digimon is more literal here and they feed off of each other's raw emotions at times and even fill each other's pain. Through this instinct bond based on a certain level of trust and understanding, both can become stronger together and evolve further beyond through Digivolution. And I think this is the first time Digimon really did this sort of thing, but the bond between them literally allows Tamer and Digimon to fully become one through this thing they call Biomerge Digivolutions. Biomerge evolutions to me feel like an attempt in the series to destroy the notion that Digimon and Tamer are similar in design to Pokemon and Trainer. Through Biomerge and even being quote unquote separate, they truly operate as one in this series. It pushes them to stride further beyond initial limits and allows them to truly grow and actually mature together. It even solidifies the idea that the two are two sides of the same coin based off of the fact that they can even do such a thing as fuse together in the first place. Through deep introspection... That's That was another huge thing that, well, not probably not consciously drew me to it initially, but... In season one and two, you had the Digi Destined with their essentially predetermined partners. But with Digimon Tamers, it the uh, the Digivice only came about when a Digimon and a human actually decided to become partners in a genuine interest. With Takato, him being the exception, he magically gets a digivice and then scans his notebook and creates a brand new digimon which is geomon but for the other tamers like henry he had his bond with uh terriermon and then he got his blue card the blue card pulled terriermon into the real world to protect him from fighting and I think it was some kind of weird digital fever dream sort of thing with Rika, but Renamon wanted the strongest tamer, and Rika won card game tournaments, so that tracks, right? But in the end, it's a, a lot of this story is building the relationship between the tamer and Digimon, which lead into the, uh, the culmination 
that is Biomerge Digivolution, where the Tamer and Digimon are so in sync and inseparable at that point. And both gain the ability to potentially be so much more than what they actually appear. Tamers gives us the commanding side that usually comes with these things like Pokemon for something I personally find a lot more genuine than capturing and making these monsters battle for you just over and over. It's a true partnership between the two parties because both have to agree to be by each other's side willingly and be on the same page. It's not just owner and animal. The relationship that comes from this level of trust with a separate species is one that allows them both to persevere and have the means to protect both worlds and even eventually grow together and become more capable beings. That's just one thing I found interesting though. Back to that other thing I mentioned earlier. Oh, there a are, real big there point topic. A lot. Depression. I wasn't joking when I said Digimon Tamers was actually my first introduction to these kind of feelings. You'll have to let me know if some other kid anime you watched in early 2000s to 2004 handled this sort of thing and did it exceptionally well, but Tamers was the first for me. To my knowledge, from what I remember, Tamers did it the best, and I can only really think of Tamers from like my childhood series that actually touched on these uh, issues of mental health. It was... It was different. Though, at that time, I was also a teenager, and I, I had a little more understanding about it, but... Yeah, the other stuff that was on at the time, I, at least that I remember watching, it wasn't, it wasn't about dealing with issues like that. It was just about going into the fantasy and never... I mean, I guess I didn't dive as deep into other stuff as I did with Digimon. And it was kind of staggering. See, in the series, there's this girl named Jerry. And from Jerry's first appearance, and even throughout the entire show, something seems a little off about her. I think the what and the why is only really registered as an adult for me personally, though. But early on, Jerry is actually shown to constantly be talking through a hand sock puppet like thing at times who is clearly her friend but also seemingly a coping mechanism for oh, God, something God, initially God. left unsaid one can only assume it's for mental health reasons and it brings a sort of comfort to her but really as a kid you don't think too much of it because she really just comes off as the silly little girl and is really cheerful actually but that's just ours and the other tamer's perception see upon getting her wish of finding a partner digimon like the rest of her friends she just as quickly ends up losing them, as not long after finding one, he's actually killed by another Digimon. Yes, like- God, that made me cry so fucking much. And just thinking about the scene is bringing tears to my eyes again. But in the end, this story wraps it up so goddamn well. Fully murdered in cold blood by another Digimon they know who, guess what, he was tired of being weak and he so desperately wanted to grow that he accepted a deal for power in exchange for the Tamers and their Digimon's lives. It's really messed up honestly. This act immediately sends Jerry spiraling into- Oh, you glazed over it just a little bit, but for those that aren't aware, that Beelzemon there, which was the one doing all the, uh, winning. <clears throat> he was actually a character that had been around since, like, the earliest bits of the episodes. He was initially Impmon. That, he was essentially that annoying friend that nobody liked but hung out with anyways. And he act his story is rejecting his tamers that he had he was scared of being hurt by them because he's seen them fight over their toys and destroy their toys he didn't want that so he rejected humans and tamers outright but still chose to hang around with the main crew that we know and through all this time and his rejection of his tamers he never gets the chance to digivolve. He never goes to champion or to ultimate. 
it's not until the uh, party finds their way into the digital world and then Impmon finds his own way into the digital world only to come across one of essentially almost gods of the digital world. Like, the, there's four sovereign Digimon, which are, like, really, really strong, and Impmon it makes a deal with the one that hates humans, so we'll give you mega form if you kill those people you've been hanging out with. And Impmon was like, deal. And then he fucking does it. And... It ends up destroying him. He goes through such a massive character arc. It's, I don't think just talking about it off the top of my head can do it justice. But unironically, one of my most loved characters in Digimon is Impmon and his story. Digimon's lives. It's really messed up, honestly. This act immediately sends Jerry spiraling into a depressive episode due to the trauma of seeing such a thing happen rightfully. Upon these events happening, though, we get a closer look at Jerry's troubled past. See, this isn't Jerry's first run-in with the death of a loved one, and both these events have left her deeply traumatized, that was her believing mother. even that it's her destiny to be left alone. This had already stood out to me when I was younger, but now, having dealt with death and depression myself, it hits extra hard on the heartstrings. This depressive episode she has really reminded me a lot of the one Asuka Langley and even some of the other characters went through in Evangelion upon a rewatch. The final arc of Tamers and Ossily, possibly the entire series, shares a lot of DNA with Ava and a couple of other series with how characters have to deal with their inner conflicts and the grim realities that we face in real life. I think too this is why Tamers is regarded as one of the darker seasons as Jerry's conflict actually kickstarts and encapsulates a large chunk of the end portion of the show, even resulting in psychological manipulation by the big bad of the series, and borderline horror imagery being presented to display just how horrifying of a threat we're really dealing with. The writers of the show... Yeah, the villain of this, like, the big bad is not some big super strong Digimon. The big bad is essentially an eraser program that's meant to gobble up excess data so it doesn't get too big. Digimon evolved over time into the fleshy beings we know them today, and so did what we came to know as the Deem Reaper, which its entire existence was to just feed. It was just to consume all the Digimon kind of thing. And then when it gets to the real world, it doesn't just stop at Digimon. I believe... Um, the reason it was hanging on to Jerry was because Jerry was her or was the D Reaper's connection to the real world, which, um, you know, let it access the real world and cause the rampage that it went on. Handled it very soundly, though. As I mentioned before, the final arc of the show actually is triggered by a lot of what's going on with Jerry as the main villain of the show, the D-Reaper actually yeah. takes advantage of her situation and uses her sadness to strengthen and feel itself. Harkening back to the bond between Tamer and Digimon, slightly, but now twisted and defiled. Through the battle with the D-Reaper, Jerry I, with- I actually didn't think of it that way. That makes so much goddamn sense, yeah. God, I love Tamers. The moral support of the Tamers, Kalumon, and even the Digimon that killed our partner, Bilzimon, confronts the reality of something so final as death, as well as her perceived loneliness head on, and comes to the conclusion that destiny is not set in stone, and if she doesn't want to be alone, she doesn't have to be. Life does in fact go on, and she can find meaning in it. And this lesson echoes not just through her, but the entirety of the Digimon Tamers cast. It all kind of comes together nicely too, because this whole arc really encapsulates the idea of growth echoed throughout the entirety of the series. Jerry gets to get the closure she deserves, and gets the chance to look past her past trauma, and finally grow along with her peers. And rewatching this portion of the show after years of my own growth really changed my perception on life, and Dealing with all these different sort of emotions and hardships we encounter as humans growing up. See, you are never truly alone, and through our connections with people, we get through almost anything together. 
and become better people in the long run. It's just a matter of trusting and accepting those around you who truly care about you and trust in the process. The bad times aren't forever and you're in fact in control of your life. That's just what I got out of revisiting Digimon Tamers though. There's also even more about the series that I feel is worth discussing, but oh, we so can leave that to more. the comments below. Oh. oh my god, just seeing that that ending scene, oh my god, I'm tearing up. That hit so f***ing hard. Oh, this, this was such a nice nostalgia trip video for me. Oh, I'm... Oh. And yeah, it, it, if you didn't get it, um, where was it? Right here, where there's Beelzebub looking in. Going his head on, and comes to the conclusion that... Read, he's reaching out to Jerry to try and save her, because he's come to realize the true ramifications of what he's done. He, and he hearkens back to using uh, Leomon's Fist of the Beast King to make that hole, to be able to reach out to her. He can never bring back Leomon, but he can give Jerry another chance. Now where were we? Like, there. Got out of revisiting Digimon Tamers though. There's also even more about the series that I feel is worth discussing, but we can leave that to the comments below. I want to hear everyone else's thoughts on this series though. Did Digimon Tamers have the same impact on you as it did to me? How do you feel about it next to the other shows like Pokemon or even compared to its neighboring seasons of Digimon? Also, So, at least in my opinion, um, comparing it to Pokemon, they definitely have their own merits. I think Digimon just hits, like Digimon Tamers personally, just hits so well because it's ha it has an actual it's got its smaller cast that it focuses on and it gives them time to develop and then it doesn't continue on essentially endlessly though i know ash has now moved on and somebody else has taken up the mantle of protagonist in pokemon anime and then in regards to the other series well or the other seasons of digimon i would say season one and two I still have a lot of nostalgic love for. Season 4 is actually where I started to fall off, and then I never really watched season 5 or later, catching the occasional movie kind of thing. Like, I did watch Digimon X Evolution, and then I've caught the try. The depths that Digimon Tamers actually goes into, and the lighthearted moments that balance it out and the story overall, the characters, there is not a thing I don't like about Digimon Tamers. So, what other anime would you like to hear my thoughts on? I've been retroactively going back and watching oldies and would love to rediscover or even find new ones that I missed growing up that we all can discuss together. Let me know in the comments below. And most importantly, if you enjoyed hearing me talk about this series, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing for more content. I definitely going subscribe. Until Just want to take a quick second to thank all the people who have joined my channel membership to become one of my beeps. It means more to me than you know and goes a long way in supporting the channel. So, thank you to all of my beeps. I'll see you all next video. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe for more and connect to the community through Discord. And remember, if you can't be the sharpest tool in the shed, you can always be the hoe.